Hello there everyone and thank you for rejoining me here in Kaizo Redux. I'm your host, Mr. Mokal Ever, playing as the Sacred Union of Tibet. We got a question, the Dalai Lama. Are the fair and democratic elections in Tibet righteously choosing Nicholas Rorik? Rorik. The democratic government can now evaluate the matter of the Dalai Lama free from his traditional influence, with the 14th Dalai Lama still far too young to represent the people of Tibet on his own. It falls to the Kashag to delineate his roles in this new revolutionary environment. Nicholas Rorik, compelled by attractive revelations and supported by the Bharatian establishment, has begun to question the absolute legitimacy of the young child of the new Dalai Lama. According to Rorik, revelations occurring across Tibet and India point towards there being a 9th Dalai Lama living, not a 14th. These objections are drawing a lot of criticism from Kham and Amdo, but the Kampa people seem to support this assertion. Should we conduct another search? So, we're going to lose 50 political power. Can we spend it at all? Continue army reform? Uh... I, is this? This is the Chinese army. We don't have this. Oh, wait, never mind. I guess we do have this. Army reform. Where this is rapid corruption, incompetent leadership, outdated tactics, obsolete equipment, poor training, or a mix of all these things. The only thing that all armies of China seem to have is a common that they're woefully inadequate compared to contemporary military standards. Overcoming these decades of neglect will take time and effort, and the performance of our force will suffer until we do so. Chinese armies have strongly struggled to catch up to Western standards. Soldiers are not ordinarily poor, notoriously poorly trained and disorderly, often recruit from a varied stock of bandits, petty criminals, and are chronically destitute. Equipment is regularly patchwork, obsolete or even downright a kick. Loyalty is typically given to individuals, officers, or a regularly filled rice bowl, and ideological motivation is ephemeral at best. It'll take a great deal of rebuilding these armies along modern lines, so we need to do that one no matter what. Um, I guess we'll lose it anyways, but we're still here at war. And I did ask you guys yesterday, what route we should go down with our focus, because right now we're doing uh, Bimoda's Ancient Wisdom, which I think I read last time, so if you're in this game, please go ahead. Cool! But we're going to continue with this, because we're still at war, too. Civilian factory. I like the stability. That's good. Um, division, attack, and defense of core territory, and more stability. Theosopho uh, theosophical ethics for healthy life. As you do like. Buddhist beauty for the world to behold. Weekly manpower. i got to go with that one. And weekly stability. The Buddhist world, and its capital here in Tibet, is perhaps the most beautiful faith to behold. Colorful and open. Intricate and unique. Peace and enchanting to watch to be traditionally practiced and wholly inherent to our way of life. The wider world would love to see such a paradise under our faith. We show on earth lost cre uh, treasures and sites hidden throughout the Himalayas and, oh, look at that, um, I'll preserve nature in the local Buddhist system with all its intricate monasteries and zong forts, serving as wardens of this natural and alluring Buddhist paradise for people to be part of and for foreign visitors to visit and bask in, or bask it. Uh, a man, according to the teaching, influences the cosmic processes greatly. Particular attention is paid to the consciousness of a man in the culture of thinking since thought is energy, capable of filling space and affecting its surroundings. A man is directly responsible for the quality of his thoughts, words, and deeds, because not only his spiritual and physical health depend on them, but also the condition of his entire planet. Calling people to live in accordance with cosmic laws, Agni Yoga opens unlimited possibilities for the spiritual transformation of life, the expansion of the consciousness, and the acquisition of high moral standards. Living well as doctrine allows us to create a true paradise on earth for people and the natural heaven we live in, backed by a respectful tourist industry as people from around the world come to seek the true answers to life. This shall let us fund the state while we dedicate ourselves to be historical, social, and cultural preservation and our wider works. Stability, attack, defense, core territory, uh, spiritual heal healing of man and nature. But, ooh, Spartacus, if you remember this, please go ahead. An avid conversationist, a con uh, conservationist, and ecologist, Nikolaus Rek Warwick. And his ideology is rooted in the environmentalist cause and the wider belief that uh, all of nature, even mankind, must be cared for and protected. Ever seeking to capture the beauty and awe-inspiring wonder of this nature, he has adorned his own paintings and writings. Rourke and his family and followers are committed to spreading this love to all under our influence. Through the use of spiritual healing practices perfected by Helena Rourke, we shall heal mankind and provide universal health care to all while our theology, ideology, and own good work shall root the idea of environmental protectionism and conservationism into the minds of the masses, following figures like Lerman and Muir to create a society that respects and appreciates nature while letting it grow with and around humanity as we adapt our lifestyles and our technologies to live in harmony with it. We shall be the wardens of nature that mankind was always meant to be under Rourke's guidance. Temper and channel the flame, firebird's flame. The flame gifted to humanity by the great firebird deity Agni has kept humanity alive. It's been our source of creativity and life for fuel for the epigenous of spiritual evolution and wider enlightenment, and has been our guide among the endless cycle of rebirth and death. However, not all flames can be trusted. The flames of nationalism must be eradicated and rechanneled into more constructive and, and creative outlets, such as those mentioned, for we can never fall into needless nationalist violence and hasty justice while we walk the peaceful path to Shambhala. Uh, theosophical Ethics for Healthy Life Steeped in the traditions of theosophy, due to our deep connections to its founders, Rorschism calls for teachings and essential truths of theosophy. 
and other similar ideals to become the foundation of our everyday lives. Prayer, piety, occultism, cosmicism, vegetarianism, karmic judgment, enjoyment and reverence of nature, the spreading of good will, charity and virtue, appreciation for the arts and the eclectic, and so much more must come to the pillar, be the pillars of every citizen's life if they are to build a true paradise here at the top of the world. Very nice. And of course we're just kind of hanging out here, getting attacked constantly. Ooh, hopefully they can destroy an enemy division. Um, actually, they should be able to destroy all these guys, but you know what? Having the AI try to do this is probably a terrible idea. Oh, they actually beat us through here. Well, that's not good. I should probably pay more attention to that, shouldn't I? Oh, here. Help them out. What? 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 what what'd you leave? How dare you leave? But, in the end, I mean, no matter what, I'm going to make sure we win no matter what, so there's that. Uh, yeah, we want that one next. Let's read a couple more focuses, shall we? Culture Hearts of the Flaming Heart. That's not bad. More political power. Um, Cor Ardens, or the Flaming Heart, was one of the work's artistic unions, created alongside others like Cor Mundi, of the crown of the world, in order to give a shared place for artists and creators to work together, find shared inspiration and revelations, and fund them and protect them from harm and detractors. Copying this plan, which will create a series of unions across the nation, specifically designed to give power, license, purchase, and greater resources to all musicians, painters, and actors, and thespians, photographers, authors, and theorizing academics, researchers, and more throughout society. Allowing them to continue the genius work of the heart, great heart and virtue, so they may work with the work as the Mahatmas of a new age, uplifting humanity alongside by being the mouthpiece through which the heaven shall sing. Helena's spiritual connections and mystic powers. Helena O'Rourke, sharing the name Helena with her former mentor and theosophies, theosophies founder Helena Blavatsky, as a conduit through which her husband Nicholas communes with the higher realms, spirits, and deities of Buddhism, including his teachers from throughout the time he calls Mahatmas, doing so with their mystic spiritual powers as a medium metaphysical or metaphysically gifted being, or be uh, called Tara Oruvasti, Oruvasti, the light of the morning star in the faith is not only this conduit, but also a talented spiritual healer, guru, theologian, author, and preacher called the mother of Agni Yoga, by her followers, and she who leads by Nicholas Rourke himself in his own creations. By her will and wisdom, and through the utilization and rational application of her powers and ways, we shall prosper under this morning star. Ooh, look at this. Karma and other absolute cosmic laws. Being based on the ancient knowledge of the East and the ancient achievements of modern science in the West, Agni Yoga concerns peculiarities of the cosmic evolution of humanity and creates a new system of perception. The teaching, commonly short, common shorthand for teaching of living ethics, the teaching of life or the teaching of light, pays particular attention to karma, dharma, and other cosmic laws that determine the motion of planets and growth of natural structures, birth or of stars, and also human behavior and the development of the universe. These laws influence the historic and social processes in human life, and unless humanity realizes this, life cannot be approved. The universe is the immense spiritual energy system in which um, man plays the most important role. Moral perfection, strict observance of ethical laws, and comprehension of the key factors that is culture and the wider development of human society are all basic principles of the spiritual and historical development of humanity as such. It is impossible to build a better future without respecting knowledge, uh, culture, art, science, and these absolute cosmic laws. So they must be enshrined in man's law here on earth and spread to the masses so all will learn the true and moral way to live and then we'll end with debating your stance on Lenin's Bolshevism. Nicholas Rohr. Uh, has long grappled internally over his thoughts and feelings to Vladimir Lenin and the wider leftist revolutionary cause allegedly aimed at freeing humanity but commonly coming with a severe cost of human life and natural beauty. A devoted pacifist and advocate for world peace and liberty and unity, Rourke stands at a crossroads, torn between the good faith idea that Lenin's revolution and others like it are justified in the war drunk actions in order to save future humanity and the planet, and the agony of watching violence and needless struggle as blood spills on spoiled land meant for utopian designs. Zongs and dub dubs for our master. In order to have a new design space, Center of his regime's power and chief monastery for his own unique philosophy and pious genius, Nicholas Huara, has commissioned the creation of new traditional Zong fortresses to be built along his own specifications and based on his own fusion of traditional Tibetan and Rorxian architecture. Uh, though the great and ancient Poltatla Palace itself and Laos has already fallen under domain and total control, Rorx still desires a new fortress built to specifications in a more isolated region of the Himalayas. Choosing a range of mountain in an isolated region, along a fertile and lush hidden valley, the mighty and impressive new Song of Rourke shall be erected, complete with its own gardens, monasteries, and art galleries, workstations, libraries, altars, yoga studios for the precise or practice of Agni Yoga, and other ornately decorated halls, serving as the utopian home of his personal dub dub guard, decorated in a Rorkian regalia, based in a fortress matching their spiritual aesthetic and the genius art of their master. From this new fortified and blazing heart of our movement, we shall bring about humanity's true epigenesis without fail. From here, true art and genius shall flow. Men under stars. Due to the nature of Tibet's night sky, being largely devoid of obscuring light and air pollutants paired with our nation's position at the top of the world, we're presented with a perfect place for celestial viewing without the need of complicated equipment and obs observatories. This situation attracts many curious individuals. Academics, astronomers, celestial occultists, and more from all over the globe. One of these people being Milan Rostislav Stefanik, 
A very passionate astronomer, aviator, and politician from Central Europe. Some may say that are mountainous and frigid terrain that shields their lush valleys is too dangerous to traverse for people who are not used to it. But this didn't stop Stefanik. He previously experienced the bad terrain during his expedition to Mont Blanc many years ago in similar expeditions in ranges like the Tarataz and the Alps. A passionate but amateur Tibetologist was come to the Himalayas after studying cultures around the planet from uh, Europe to Africa. Stefanik has also come to study with local monks and provided aid to many local Tibetans in need, with his figure from afar and others like him, like Charles Alfred Bell, Hugh Edward Richardson, Rolf Stein, Jacques Bacot, uh, Giuseppe Tucci, Tucci Luciano Petek, and more. Tibet is truly blessed by the strangest but most earnest people from around the globe. Our lands attract the most unusual people. And, uh, expand, uh, the mint? Do we use that? Uh, eventually we do want pl flames. Flames? Flames. Oh, we need some guns. Uh, we do want some planes, but eventually we need to do urban development. Demands from the people for modern plumbing in cities has finally reached the Ganden Fo Drang. We finally have time to answer this claim. The Kashaga do one better and has authorized the clearing of additional land for urban development and inclusion to lay pipes for this urban sewage. And recovery teams. Having experience equipping our military with civilian firearms, our military staff has authorized the procurement and distribution of civilian firearms by recovery teams. These auxiliaries are being trained to identify and categorize weapons in the local area for use by the army. Introducing Theosophy to Tibet. The Secret Union Party has finally convinced enough Lhasa residents to allow an official delegation of the Theosophical Society into Tibet. This also won't have it. Jamon's old residence in Lhasa has promised to be a positive factor in the country's stability. The delegates arriving from India have treated the occasion with the greatest gratitude. A shrine has appeared to the greatest great philosophers, Helena Blavatsky, Anni Besant, and Jiddu Krishnamurti, representing the three descendants of the ancient peoples. Theosophists believe came out of Tibet in ancient days. Lenin would be so proud. And then we gotta do that one next, which is gonna be a lot of fun. For insistence, sure, why not? With the British Empire and India divided, the Russians pushed back by the Central Asian armies and our ancient few, uh, scant few sympathizers in China under siege. It's time we make a choice. We can leverage the vast material wealth of the Gandang Fo Drang to carry favor with sympathizers overseas. But unless the need is extremely dire, we will not make any permanent alliances with foreign powers. Forcing Roshism across our realm, the epigenesis, or spiritual and cultural evolution of all mankind that Rourke and its philosophy hope to bring about is a delicate process with many intricacies, and the wider uh, Rorschian thought form must be carefully explained and prophetized of the masses willing to learn from such a truth, while the rest of the cosmic rubbish must be swept aside for the greater good. Seeking to personally be a vehicle for this epigenesis and wider spread of his own ideas, Rorik and his family make numerous speeches throughout the country while organizing and hosting seances, spiritual sessions, creative unions, and cooperative art installations, and more in monasteries and tribal halls throughout Tibet. Though the eff efficacy of such public appearances can be debated, with most of his speeches being met with blank or confused stares and the unimaginative lights or sighs of disinterest of true cosmic rubbish. The large bulk of the masses may not yet grasp our genius. This matter, not for the will of the cosmic rubbish, who have succumbed to the idea of a life and spiritual existence without energy, hope, art, or creativity has no bearing on the path to utopia under the Agni Yoga and Norsk's philosophy. Humanity in its path to perfection matters. Individual humans and their wants do not. Reconciling our stance on the supposed Mahatma Lenin. <clears throat> Long fighting with himself and stuck in the throes of inner turmoil over this internal debate of self, Nicholas Rourke is torn between two realities, his non-ideological past and his socialist present. Due to being hesitant to justify the violent actions of Vladimir Lenin, one of his greatest sources of inspiration. Once opposed to Lenin's violent revolution and initially supported of the whites before moving from Russia to, and to America, before coming back to Tibet, Rourke has finally gone back and forced on his stance towards socialism and revolutionary actions. He agrees here as merit in doing everything in your power to help push a stubborn mankind towards utopian unity, using such one ton violence and needless death of the innocence or degradation of this natural environment to do so is deplorable. As such, Rorschach must finally settle the future of this burgeoning philosophy and choose a path between Lenin inspired Budo communism and traditional esoteric culture, and social epigenesis free of ideology under a paternalistic system of practical idealism. So, hmm, organization would be nice, local empire. With his own path towards traditional utopia, turn from Lenin's bloodied hands. Or we shall walk the path of the Red Mahatma. Well, overall, the time of recording, there's overwhelming support for We Shall Walk the Path of the Red Mahatma. Look at this. Coming to terms with the idea that sometimes radicalism and revolutionary actions are the only way to push society along towards utopia. If it means getting your hands bloody, Lenin did what he had to do in order to try and save his people, and as such, we must do the same. No longer broad in the inner conflict, Rorsch knows what must be done. He shall be heralding in the new of the Red Mahatma's revolutionary ideology and spirit, and by his side, humanity shall be guided towards egalitarian Budo communist utopia. Hey, look, more political power! Called Budo communism by his close friends in Russia during the early stages of the failed revolution. 
Rorak fuses organizational methods and hierarchical design from the Buddhist clergy in Tibet with Bolshevik communist, anarcho syndicalist, and wider socialist ideology in order to create a party organization that truly is one foot in the physical and political realm of man, and the other in the spiritual realm of Buddhist philosophy. These ideas, supported by our metaphysical teachings and spiritualist cosmicists, truth shall uplift the proletarian masses to pious and egalitarian paradise. Also, with this, we were able to finally get this part of uh, Chamdo, so we're actually doing okay. We're still, uh, oh, foreign assistance. Look at all this stuff. Nice. Deal with backroom, backstabbing industrialists. Ooh, back, oh, backroom deals with them. It's not bad. And we're trying to, of course, continue to reform our army. But we've also done another focus here called uh, domestic artillery production. It's time we internalize the advice the British inspectors gave us and develop our own artillery. The designs will, of course, be based upon the models in Delhi and be compatible with their ammunition, but the production will follow to us. Work with our allies in the tip. Climb to the tip. Top of Tibet, with their help, the Tibet Improvement Party is a key ally in a crusade to bring utopia to the Himalayas and beyond. We shall observe the party and their members, making them all full allies within our government, clergy, and bureaucracy in order to utilize their skills and ideas for the good of all the nation. Absolutely. As we're still at war here, but I think we can actually start striking out a little bit more. I'd love to get here, so here would be good, but there's a river there. There's a river all around us, which is not ideal. Um, I'm not sure how strong we can really be, but we do have allies here to help hold the line. If we can actually win here... That would be fantastic. I mean, it looks like we might be able to be, or actually be able to win here. <coughs> um, reaffirm loyalty to the Dalai Lama. Regardless of the path we take, the Dalai Lama and the wider clergy nobility of the Tibet is the foundation of the society and not something that the Rorks ever plan on removing or displacing. As the highest mortal figure in Buddhism, the Dalai Lama and the other Tolkals, and leaders like the Panchum and Lama will be respected and obeyed for they are the people's link to the beyond. Rorshism shall work and operate in tandem with, not above or around, through all those living Mahatmas for the good of the faith and those for the spiritual evolution of mankind. We actually won! Wow. Fancy. If you can win there too, I will be most impressed. Also, I did grab, we're doing a Spear of Firepower, but instead of doing a Overwhelming firepower, which I always do. I did ideological loyalty just because I figured, you know what? We need ideologically loyal people with this route, so. Can I hang out quick first? If anything. And you all to attack this direction. This is where we really should be going. Yes. Find us everyone about this, please go ahead. Nice. And War Tiller is going to hit him even a little harder. It's a little two at a time. Um, military police. Maybe some planes going. I think that'd be fantastic. No supplies through there, which really sucks. Probably really use supplies. Um, there you go. Let's see what we can do about that. Span our lines a little bit, or we could hold it there. If you take this tile, that'd be the best. But you know, it is what it is. One of the Soviet saints and their teachings. Vladimir Lenin, you call us very love. Leon Trotsky, Gustav Kurbat, and many other Soviet or socialist martyrs that have died fighting for what they believe in as they try to save humanity with internationalism and egalitarian utopian leftist ideas, must be honored their teachings respected and followed. Not only will they raise the new saints in the pan pantheon of wider humanity, for their art, writings, and theories shall be spread by the state, and their ideology shall be incorporated into a growing internationalist front for human, for human unity. Move the masses with art and faith, great works of art by Rourke and his favorite artists, funded by the state and unions like the Corona Mundi and Cor Ardens. Shall be the vehicle through which we proselytize our message to those that reject faith, while our Buddhist truths about faith in the universe and spiritual and metaphysical abilities shall win the hearts, minds, and souls of the world's faithful in tandem. Faith and art shall be the voice in our message, spreading the will of our ideology and our desire to peacefully unite humanity in a culturally and spiritually evolved fashion, exemplifying the true epigenesis. Some may call it propaganda, and may some may call it enforcing our will by eroding certain freedoms, but we know it is the divine truth. Uh, so how could anyone deny? No, they just try to kill themselves. I love it. Kill yourselves harder on us. Our form of Leninism. The obvious idea is preached by those in a red theocracy. Go off for working with either the red the social democratic or in social demo, uh, democratic socialist forces of the Tibet and Prima Party are following the truth of Leninism, fused with our un own unique syncretic Buddhist theology. However, that's not the only path available to us. We can instead pursue a mixture of radical socialist and Bolshevik views, inspired by Bukharin and Narodness, among others like anarcho pastoralist. Or we can pursue anarcho syndicalism and unionism, where it's proven to be quite successful in France, England, and in America. Whatever form of socialism we decide upon, to dictate our economics shall not change the fact that we are Buddha communists under or without deviation. Despite the likes of Bukharan, we pursue Marxist, market socialism for the people. Oh. Because right now we're a secret union party. The Tibetan group part becomes the ruling party. Radical Socialist Party, Mahatma. 
to be part of part of socialism. Inspired by modern and successful anarcho syndicalists, we bend the new leftism. Syndicalism. Walk loyally along Lenin's lines. Inspired by Lenin, but work closely with the tip. We'll get more stability there. Um, I kind of want to do this one. The Tibet Improvement Party. Social Democrats. I kind of want to do this one, but I still want this one. Or walk loyally. I mean, you guys did. A lot of you guys wanted us to do um, esoteric Leninism. Of course, Budo communism. Um, esoteric Leninism. I guess. What closely? What do we have here? Oh, he's already still Mahatma, so it doesn't even matter really. Um, so you know what? You guys wanted a lot of you guys wanted esoteric Leninism. We're gonna we're gonna stay stay the path. Mahatma, Mahatma Daddy. Navy, uh, Air Force is probably more important than anything else right now. Reception. Let's see, embrace Buddhist communism, of course, you betcha. Of course, with that, now we get 650 weekly manpower, which is nice. We really need to kill these guys off over here, because our allies are actually doing well. Mongolia is doing very well, for the most part. And they keep attacking us too, like, they, they, they want to die. Like, this is weird. They want to kill themselves. Uh, under the Manu of Fuyama for the new root race. Manu Singh, or meaning progenitor. Fuyama is a spiritual name of Nicholas Roche and features the same titles as mentor that would unite the culture at the behest of the spiritual advisors. And perhaps even himself and his wife, Roche has come to the realization that he is in the reincarnation of his old master. And shall not take it upon himself to guide humanity to the Pax Cultura. This united culture is a true and unified cohesive culture of the united humanity the respected treasures, monument, high art, scientific achievements, and general history of the people that came before us, creating a grand and perfect united culture, mixing together elements of all groups throughout the time and history, both among humankind and wider among uh, among the wider spiritual Buddhist universe. All shall become one, and one shall become all, as we become masters of the endless cycle and create a new culturally perfect uh, root race, a new perfect humanity. Nice. No more organization, too, which is always good, too. Oh, look at this! I do like that one, but look at manpower, war support. Uh, we're getting more support. We're, we're gonna do uh, this one next. Under the Soviet saints and their teachings. They just they just love killing themselves. I mean, it's crazy, but still. I wouldn't mind doing this one. Background back uh, deal, backroom deal, because we get we need we need those. I need more millies. I need more civvies. I need more of everything. Uh, look at this. Bolshevism bound by Buddhist morality. In order to keep our form of Bolshevism in check and a peace, protecting our people, our environment, and ourselves from revolutionary violence and other breaches of our principles, as pacifists, we shall bind Bolshevism with Buddhist morality and the cosmic laws we hold so dear, of course. This shall ensure that violent repressions and blood revolutionary action never take place under our watch, for we must be better than those who came before us if uh, we are to succeed at opening the door to Shangri La. Absolutely. Oh, they actually busted through. Oh, they're attacking us again. Look at that. Who would have thought? Honestly, as much as uh, we want to increase what we have, at least get 18 power with. Let him attack it one more time as we're trying to get more cavalry up here. And I'll see what we can do about that. Of course, we got a little more soft attack and breakthrough, which is good. I'm going to click on this one. Nice. Ah, finally, we're making Artie. Oh, that's not good. That's good, though. Time for more coordination. Honor the Saints, yes. Another research slot would be fantastic. Against the Lunleys, whatever. Get up to here and get to here. That'd be nice, but still. So there's a river there too. We've done 46%. We've cut off a lot of people. 100,000 uh, people from a clique. Sichuan, 175,000. Jesus Christ. It's all that deputy of the adventurer's father. Luisa fulfills his role as uh, oh God, uh, leader of the nation and father to our unique ideology, Nicholas Roche, and along with his family and close associates, still continue their regular adventures and expeditions throughout the world in order to document experience of various cultures alive or dead of this world. 
when not in Lhasa. The nation is run by a unique theocracy and other close allies dedicated to our ideology, ensuring that the nation is always in sound hands while the orcs track their way across the planet's most isolated regions in order to behold the true beauties of the world a human race can offer. From Antarctica to the Congo, from the native tribes of the American plains to the jungles of the Yucatan, the peaks of the Andes and the depths of the Amazon to the icy shorts of Alaska and the North Pole. All the earth shall be explored and their wonders recorded by devoted leaders, for no culture, history, or art or other human creation shall ever be destroyed unless again. The true worldwide adventure, but unfortunately we will have to end our episode there a little shorter than normal. But if you enjoyed the video though, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new, check out our Discord link in the description below if you're already. And I'll see you tomorrow as we continue on to see what else we can do with Nicholas Rorsch. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.